Here we presents the top 5 best camera for photography. Starting at number 5, Canon EOS M50 Mark II. Canon has just announced the EOS M50 Mark II a relatively minor update to one of its most popular mirrorless models. The M50 Mark II shares the same 24MP APSIS sensor with its predecessor, and the same Digic 8 image processor. The dual pixel autofocus system has been updated to allow for eye tracking in both stills and video, and users can now capture vertical video and stream to YouTube live over a smartphone internet connection. The rest of the camera's specs are largely unchanged. Video tops out at 4K 24p with a heavy 1.5x crop, and autofocus in 4K is contrast detect only. Full HD comes with dual pixel autofocus, and you can capture slow motion up to 120p. On the still side, a new electronic shutter option is available, and burst speeds top out at 7.4 fps with continuous autofocus. The camera is separated to capture 305 images on a charge, but of course, you can expect much more in general use Canon USA Incorporated a leader in digital imaging solutions, today announced the EOS M50 Mark II interchangeable lens camera, the successor to the number one selling mirrorless camera in the US market, the EOS M50. An all-in-one product for content creators with improved video features and autofocus capabilities, the EOS M50 Mark II is the latest high-quality digital imaging camera in the notable EOS lineup. Our customer base includes future content creators and imaging storytellers. It's in our best interest to continuously provide high-quality products that are easy to use in the creative world of photography and video content creation, as well as streaming, said Tetsuro Tony Kano, Executive Vice President and General Manager of the Canon USA Inc. Imaging Technologies and Communications Group. The EOS M50 Mark II continues to pave the way for photography and video enthusiasts to experience a lightweight interchangeable lens camera with many similar features as our full-frame professional mirrorless cameras. For the family who strives for high-quality output when capturing their precious moments, or for the budding social media creator, the added and improved capabilities of the EOS M50 Mark II camera make the upgrade to an ilk extremely appealing. For more information and price, check out the product links in description, at number 4. Canon EOS 2000D. The Canon EOS 2000D is a great beginner camera that offers good image quality, exposure compensation, and easily accessible controls. The camera can record full HD videos at 30 frames per second, and has a 9-point autofocus system. It also gets an inbuilt flash and an optical viewfinder. The Canon EOS 2000D DSLR camera uses a 24. 1 megapixel app CCMOS sensor and features the Canon FS lens mount. It is bundled with an 18 to 55 mm lens that works in tandem with the Digic 4 Plus image processor to deliver good quality images and video. Although this camera offers a good autofocus system, it only delivers a continuous shooting speed of 3 fps. The ISO range is expandable up to 12,800, but there is no dual pixel CMOS app for live view focusing. The Nikon Coolpix B700 offers better performance, although it's no DSLR. The design of the EOS 2000D is very similar to the older 1300D. You get an interchangeable Canon FS lens mount, a textured coating on the front grip, and a plastic body. The camera gets a 3-inch flush-mounted display that lacks touchscreen support. It has easily accessible controls and dials, and a pop-up inbuilt flash for those dark days. The optical viewfinder is good enough, and you also get a live view mode on the rear display. Don't like the chunky design? Perhaps you should try the Nikon P7700. As an entry-level DSLR, the Canon EOS 2000D offers a lot for the money. The new 24. 1 megapixel app CCMOS sensor delivers great image quality, and is a big improvement over the Rebel T6. It also results in better dynamic range, ISO performance, and raw file output. The camera also has good rear button placement for easy control of all the settings. You will also use these buttons to navigate on the LCD screen. However, at this price, the Canon PowerShot SX710 is definitely better value. In conclusion, the Canon EOS 2000D could have been a better DSLR camera, but is plenty for a beginner. It is after all an entry-level camera that offers a high-resolution 24. 1 megapixel image sensor, fast autofocus, and full HD 30 FPS recording. The non touch LCD screen is a letdown, but the rear button arrangement makes up for it. Halfway of my listed number 3, 
Canon EOS Rebel T8i. We've been waiting to test the Canon EOS 850D since it was first announced back in February 2020. But the global pandemic meant worldwide supplies came to a grinding halt. However, while we still wrestle with weekly challenges and evolving restrictions, Canon has been able to finally release the camera. The 850D is positioned as more of an all-rounder camera for enthusiasts than a true beginner DSLR, though it's equally tempting for existing Canon users stepping up from cameras like the entry-level EOS 1300D or 800D. As far as movie recording is concerned, the camera can record in full HD at up to 60 FPS, or 4K UHD resolution at up to 25 FPS. There's also a detailed setup for time-lapse movies and automatic scene selection. To counteract the jittery shake associated with handheld movie shooting, the 850D features 5-axis movie digital is, for smooth, controlled video capture. The 850D gets a new, dedicated AFON button at the rear that's long been a favorite on higher-spec Canon DSLRs like the EOS 90D and Canon EOS 7D Mark II, and also full-frame pro cameras like the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV. This is a small but welcome addition as it can be used for back button autofocus, leaving the shutter button just for metering when half pressing, and taking the picture, when fully pressing the button. If you're looking to step up from a camera phone to explore more creative stills photography with a proper camera, the Canon EOS 850D is a lightweight, yet powerful DSLR that captures detailed, colorful images. Its improvements over the 800D are subtle though, as both have 24 MP sensors, 45 cross-type AF points, 6-7 FPS burst shooting, and Wi-Fi. The 850DS headline new feature 4K video recording, sounds great, but Canon is only playing catch-up with existing 4K-capable mirrorless cameras in the same sector. Plus, with up to a huge 64% crop factor, and no phase detect AF available, the 850DS implementation of 4K video is nowhere near as useful as you'd hope. Coming in at number 2. Nikon D3500. The Nikon D3500 is the latest version of Nikon's entry-level DSLR. Launched at the end of 2018, it's effectively an update to the evergreen Nikon D3400, a starter DSLR that's been a long-term favorite. There haven't been many changes, and it's unlikely you'd want to upgrade your old D3400 to the new D3500, but this refresh is enough to keep it in our list of the best cameras for beginners and best student cameras. The D3500 isn't just Nikon's cheapest and simplest DSLR, it's also its lightest, weighing just 415 grams, body only, and that's with a battery and a memory card. It will usually come with a lightweight 18 to 55 mm AFP kit lens which is a retracting mechanism to make it more portable when it's not switched on. It's not quite as small as a mirrorless camera, but it's light, fast enough and cheap enough to prove that there's life in the DSLR design yet. If you're comparing the D3500 against mirrorless alternatives, its body is going to seem pretty fat and chunky by comparison. This does give you a good grip on the camera, though, and a redesigned button layout on the rear makes the D3500 easy to handle without accidentally pressing buttons you didn't mean to. The rear screen is not touch-sensitive, so you're reliant on the physical buttons and dials. The screen is fixed, without even a tilting mechanism for low-angle shots, but you have to accept some compromises at this price. The display quality is very good, though, with sharp detail and bright, clear colors. The information display is especially good, showing you graphical representations of the shutter speed, lens aperture and ISO setting, and this goes a long way towards demystifying exposure settings and how they interact. Nikon has done a great job here. It's refreshed an existing and successful design very effectively and provided beginners with a light, responsive and easy-to-use way to get into DSLR photography. For more information and price, check out the product links in description. And number 1. Canon EOS Rebel T7. The Canon EOS Rebel T7 2000D is an entry-level DSLR targeted toward first-time ILK users and smartphone upgraders. It's a slight update to the T6, upgrading to a 24MP sensor, but otherwise contains the same internals and hardware spec as the T6. It offers Wi-Fi with NFC for easier photo sharing when you're out and about. Photographers using an ILK for the first time will do just fine in intelligent auto mode, but unfortunately Canon's beginner-friendly feature assistant isn't included, for that you'll need to look to the pricier SL2 or T7i. Those looking to learn, 
and take control of camera settings will be able to take advantage of a rear command dial for quick access to shooting parameters, but advanced users may start to find the minimal physical controls limiting. The rear screen doesn't tilt or offer touch control as some in this class do. The T7 offers a 9-point aft system which is now several generations old. Overall, it's reliable, but it predictably slows down in low light, and live view focusing speeds are just slow across the board. Aft point selection is just a button press away, but its competitors with touch-to-focus capability will likely seem much more intuitive to someone who's used to shooting with a smartphone. The good news is that with a battery rated to 500 shots per charge, the T7 outperforms mirrorless competitors by a significant margin. We generally find that Canon's entry-level Rebels deliver pleasing images right out of the box. JPEG processing tends towards saturated blues and reds, and contrast can be on the stronger side, but they deliver punchy images that will serve a first-time user well. Those who dig deeper will find raw files useful for fine-tuning images taken in poor light, as well as moderate shadow pushing. Despite using a newer 24MP sensor, the T7's aging Digic 4 Plus processor offers a maximum expansion ISO setting of 12,800, consistent with the T6. That comparatively low number means the T7 is likely not well suited to very low light shooting. Overall, the T7 should provide a decent amount of control that's likely to be sufficient for a range of beginning to intermediate photographers. If the optical viewfinder, DSLR form factor or rock bottom price are especially attractive, the T7 is a fine option. But some of its competitors can offer you the convenience of a touchscreen, better AF and live view, and even tracking ability, along with features like in-camera panorama and filters. If that sounds tempting, your money will be better spent on one of the T7's mirrorless competitors. I have included these product link in the description. You can check out this link for more information and latest price. Thank you for watching this video. Please hit the like button. Share with your friends. And be sure to subscribe.